so I'm uh, very happy to uh, introduce our uh, speaker for the next uh, lecture course. And uh, that's the last lecture course we'll get going in this school. That's uh, Gautam Mandi. And he'll tell us about black hole evaporation and the information loss puzzle and so on. Actually, nicely complementing what Surat has already started doing in his course. Thank you. Thanks, Sandeep. <coughs> Can anybody hear me? No. I can't. Hi, here it is. Can everybody hear me now? OK, thank you. So um, I have been asked to give an introduction to Hawking radiation. So I'll start with uh, uh, the uh, stuff that is known uh, for a long time now, from 1974. So that's Hawking's work. Uh, so and uh, then um, so build up to uh, some of the newer things and also try to connect up with uh, 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 the discussion that uh, Subrat is uh, telling me about. <coughs> so, um, so basically, <coughs> I will, uh, this is the rough plan. So today, um, going to give a very little <coughs> introduction to quantum field theory in curved space time. A uh, little example of uh, I'll give you Bigger? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, QFT in curved space time. So let me, um, okay, let me write this. <clears throat> Maybe the problem is both with the font size and the legibility. So that's, and then an example of particle creation in a 2D cosmology. Then the uh, the notion of particles and vacuum. Known inertial observers in flat space. So that's Rindler So I'll introduce Rindler space time. So Rindler space time is interesting by itself, you know, for in order to explain the uh, role of non-inertial observers in flat space um, and also about the various choice of vacua that are possible in quantum field theories even in flat space. And um, so in a way, you know, this is an example in which the particle creation is an essential kind of particle creation in the sense that there is an essential time dependence in the problem. There is no uh, time-like killing vector in this uh, uh, model. This particle, as we'll see, okay, it comes from the choice of the space-time coordinates because of the observers, uniformly accelerated observer. It will see a bath of thermal radiation in a standard Minkowski vacuum. So, uh, 
Um, there's a beautiful discussion of detectors. If I have time, uh, I'll discuss a little bit about that um, in this uh, thing. So, um, so this is entirely, you know, observer dependent stuff in a sense non uh, essential particle creation and um, number four that will be from tomorrow onwards black hole that will combine some elements of both two and three there will be parts of the black hole space time where there is non essential uh, time uh, dependence that is to say there will be no time like filling vector and parts where the Rindler physics um, <coughs> so the black hole that so these these I hope to do today and uh, so tomorrow I'll do uh, black holes in great detail both collapse and <coughs> eternal and uh, it will turn out that there is a deep relation between the eternal black hole and the Rindler space and uh, this will be tomorrow. <coughs> And in lecture three, I'll talk about back reaction, evaporation, well maybe I'll start talking about from lecture two itself and the issues of unitarity and information loss, etc. Biden would have told you quite a bit about these things also and if time permits then I'll talk about some microscopic derivation Hawking radiation in the D1, D5 system of string theory and something that I will surely not have time is to talk about the relation of all this with the physics of normalization. Okay, so that is the rough plan. So let me start. Uh, bigger than this? Oh, okay. <clears throat> I see. All right, good. So <clears throat> now, lecture one, the the font size will be twice as big. <clears throat> good. <clears throat> okay. So, what is the idea here? Um, what is quantum field theory in a curved space time? So we treat the metric as classical. A metric and perhaps some other fields as classical and their fluctuations as quantum and some other fields uh, with their interactions uh, also as quantum okay so roughly speaking this is the idea that suppose you have a space-time metric and some fields which I generically call phi i okay so the action could be some I am interested in some functional integral like this okay and could be of the form some so I am not careful about coefficients in this part or any dimension does not matter. it could be so some matter fields might appear in this part of the Lagrangian 
sorry, phi 1. So, I am talking about two kinds of signals. One of them is appearing from the gravitational action itself, okay. And so, this I would call S1, and then there could be others which couple to gravity just like here. So, here there is a coupling to gravity like this. Well, this is just a example, garden variety example. <coughs> and now we'll think of the limit of the Newton's constant going to zero, okay. See, Newton's constant plays the role, as you can see from this functional integral, it plays the role uh, age bar in this part of the Lagrangian, okay. So, in the limit of uh, Newton's constant going to zero, okay, I can basically approximate this part of the functional integral, okay, by its classical value, okay. So, so there will be in this functional, so this functional integral is like of the form S1 over Gn plus S2. I imagine that there is a classical solution, G bar mu nu and phi 1 bar, such that this is true. Okay. So, clearly, this, okay, the leading term of this. Uh, will be the solution with classical values and then as you know you can substitute g equal to g bar plus square root of g times h and phi 1 equal to phi 1 bar plus square root of g times delta phi 1 and such things. So, there will be the part, the background dependence will be there and you will have the fluctuations, the gravitons as well as the quadratic quantum fluctuations of phi 1. So, this is the standard thing that happens. So, this phi 1 is like in, in, in super gravity effective Lagrangians, it is like this, okay. This scalar fields like phi 1 they come from the original 10 dimensional uh, string theory or they can come from compactification and so on and so forth with a 1 over g n there. But you could also have other scalar fields which are uh, just quantum in which their interactions will stay in the uh, Newton's constant going to 0 limit. So, and, and you will also have this phi S2 which will now, okay, couple to only the background <laughs> sorry. There are various ways of uh, uh, <clears throat> well motivating this. So, one way is to simply say that um, so you see um, that the uh, relative magnitude of the classical term and the quantum term is determined by uh, this object, this should be uh, much, 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 much bigger than this one. So, if the order of S1 and S2 and uh, uh, well, this is the quadratic part of S1, if the order of these S's are the same, then just the 1 over Gn factor hikes this up and you can basically use the class semi-classical approximation unless of course, 
even this guy becomes small okay in a time dependent situation in which uh, you know like a decaying black hole or something then this object also might become small so the back reaction of this okay the what i'm trying this on the same order as this okay which you can see either in the action or in the equation of motion so then your uh, so that's a situation that will happen in case of an evaporating black hole and so on uh, but till that happens we can work with the probe approximation and our so the quantum field theory in curved space time basically trying to quantize actions like these okay in which the gravity and some part of the matter fields are classical and gravitons and fluctuations these are treated as quantum okay good so how does one do quantum field theory in curved space time so We'll start with a very simple example. Is that better? Okay. Uh, thank you. Right. So we'll start with some uh, specific example of um, these parts. Okay. which is simply a free scalar field in d dimensions view the um, you know pointer to the literature uh, later on in more detail but there's a book by Birrell and Davis called quantum field theory in this time this 1982. There are some excellent sets of lectures uh, by John Preskill, okay, which is available in his on the same subject. And uh, Hawking's paper, amazingly, the original paper of Hawking, uh, 1974, elements of many of the things that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so that that paper and various uh, uh, follow-up papers of Hawking uh, and people, they have elements of these things that I'm going to talk about. So, uh, so we wish to quantize this theory to compute the partition function, the stress tensor, and so on. And all of this will turn out to be ambiguous stuff, okay? Something that you uh, had not encountered in your discussion of flat space quantum field theory, which is that you need a choice of the vacuum, okay? So it depends on the choice of the vacuum. So roughly speaking, you have a space time, it's a curved space time. It could even be the case with flat space time. Then you have some notion of time, okay? Time slicing and the notion of Hamiltonian that depends on your time slicing. So therefore, the ground state of the Hamiltonian, which is the vacuum, that also depends on your time slicing, clearly. So that is why um, but I'll keep coming back to this issue of the notion of vacuum. So this is the first uh, important departure which quantum field theory cur uh, in curved spaces, it sort of drives home. But even in flat space, these issues are there. You can choose various different kinds of vacua, uh, you know, to suit the uh, needs of a particular physics discussion. So, um, okay, uh, uh, that's a, yeah, okay, all right, good. So there's, so why, <coughs> so why did we not encounter this normally in our uh, textbook quantum field theories? That is because in Minkowski space, so today I will talk about um, Minkowski space. 
and then um, so the one example of cosmology which is asymptotically flat both in the past and in the future and tomorrow I am going to talk about black holes. So, in, uh, in all these examples, okay, the notion of aqua, they go as follows. Okay. In Minkowski space, there is a unique vacuum, okay, which is uh, uh, symmetric under the uh, Poincare uh, group. That is to say, it is annihilated. by all generators of the Poincare group. How do you uh, get at this vacuum? So, you take the scalar field and write down a complete set of solutions. And you choose a particular frame T and X, okay, given by the coordinates T and X, and you say that all the A uh, operators, okay, they are annihilation operators, they annihilate the vacuum, and um, the um, <coughs> so by the way, right from the beginning, let me say that if there is uh, a choice of time that I have made, then I will always call e to the power minus i omega t with omega positive as the positive frequency mode. Okay. Given a certain choice of time, i del t, that is the Hamiltonian, that being positive will be called the positive frequency mode. If there is no canonical choice of time, have complete sets, but out of which, which one to call, which one to assign these oscillators uh, A and which one to oscillate the, uh, assign the oscillators A dagger to, that is, that will be arbitrary, okay. But given the choice of time, this is what will happen. Now, you might say, well, why do I uh, choose T x and why not T prime x prime, which is some other set of uh, uh, other uh, other frame, okay. Uh, you can do that, but you can show that if you choose another set like this, which is related by an inertial transformation, so another inertial set of observer, just boost, okay, or transmission, and so on, then these guys are related to so. If you have make a, made a Lorentz transformation lambda, then it, was, it would be related to the old oscillators A by this uh, thing. These are, these are composed of exponentials of these generators, okay. So, then you can sh easily see that if A k acting on 0 is equal to clearly A k prime acting on the same state is also equal to 0, right, because this is nothing but u dagger u, but u acting on 0 gives it, it gives uh, back uh, the state, the vacuum state itself. So, therefore, it is invariant, okay. So, this is the reason why you ne never bothered about the choice of the vacuum state, okay, in talking about uh, space time uh, in, in, in this inertial coordinate system. However, the injury is not available. Okay, when you go to non-inertial uh, frames, and as a result, the vacuum changes. Okay, so wait. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that one can first from this. Okay. So this is the chain of logic that. If I define, uh, uh, if I define uh, my uh, quantization of the theory, 
expansion, then this P and G will be built out of this uh, um, A dagger and A in an appropriate fashion. And then the uh, uh, one can show from that definition that P and J acting on that is equal to 0. And then these will be exponentials of, uh, so U will be exponentials of this P's and J's and uh, therefore it will be, it will act as 1 on this state 0. So therefore it is in indeed unique, but we will see uh, towards uh, in a, in a few minutes that this does not work with non-inertial observers. Okay, so, but before going there, let me also tell you now that um, what happens in some curved space-time examples such as, okay, suppose I have some two-dimensional cosmology like this. Okay, in which um, you know x is space and the scale of space is time uh, dependent, and so this is my t and this is my x, and maybe the time dependence is only somewhere in the middle, okay, and there is no dependence of the scale factor on x, so there is some time dependence here between some p1 and p2 let us say or it could be some gradual you know uh, time dependence etc etc but eventually topically in the past and in the future it is flat space okay. So in particular it could be some this alpha function could be some tan hyperbolic stuff it goes from one constant to another constant okay. So then it is asymptotically flat in the past and it is asymptotically flat in the future. So therefore, we do have the notion of the same kind of okay, in the past and in the future, but we will find out that they are not the same. Okay. So <coughs> these two choices of the vacuum will not be the same. In particular, if I start with a vacuum uh, here, the Minkowski vacuum according to this, okay, we will end up with a state here which will have a bath of the out particle. Okay, it will not be a no particle, this, it will not be a zero particle state, it will have particles, uh, particle density in it. Okay, so, um, so that, so that is the other, that is uh, another example in which there could be asymptotically flat regions where we can use vacua which are uh, Minkowski like. Okay, so and then we will find that in the, in case of the black hole, <coughs> for example, collapsing black hole, there to begin with you have Minkowski space, okay, or approximately Minkowski space and, but to end, end up there will be modes, okay, which are forever confined within the black hole horizon and there will be modes which go out to infinity. So the future will consist of one part which is asymptotically flat and one part which is not, okay. So there will be a notion of the usual Minkowski vacuum in one part in the future, but not in the other one. So it will sort of, uh, you know, as I said, it will sort of combine elements of this. So um, let me say very quickly how to deal with this one, because this is a cute example. So this is two-dimensional cosmology and let me say that this is my uh, this is my field theory, and um, so I can go to a conformal time coordinate like this, in which case I have simply defined this redefined this phi to be eta such that the factors, uh, this alpha square eta is the same as, this is a mis, misnomer, this definition, well maybe something else, 
may be the initial alpha I should call alpha tilde and this is alpha tilde I should call. Okay. So, that is my definition. So, now this is conformally flat. So, if this was a massless theory in two dimensions, then the conformal factor would not have shown up at all, but let me keep a little bit of mass. So, the Lagrangian now looks like Okay. So, there is a time coupling the potential. Okay. So, this is you can just apply time dependent perturbation theory. Indeed, you can solve this problem of change of the ground state and so on and so forth, particle creation by using time dependent perturbation theory. Okay. In other words, So, you can think of this as an interaction vertex. You can write down the Hamiltonian that will be time dependent Hamiltonian clearly. Okay. And the, the modes in the past, okay, they will because of the time dependent perturbation uh, theory. So, so there is there is this vertex which uh, let me say that it, it, it looks like just. So, there is an there is an external time dependent coupling. Let me call it some external time dependent coupling. So, that is alpha square eta phi phi. If you write it in terms of the modes, there will be a dagger a dagger terms there okay? and there will be also a a terms. So, this if you allowed for a moment to let me identify this with g eta eta if this was a fluctuating metric, okay, then this is nothing but the graviton. Okay. So, this time dependent perturbation here. So, I have a time dependent geometry. Okay. So, let me let me say what I am trying to say. I have a time dependent geometry which is giving rise to a time dependent uh, interaction term in the uh, in the field theory and that can produce particles. Okay. It can produce particles and this could be identified in the full theory as nothing but the graviton rise to 2, two phi particles. Okay. So, that is that is particle creation that can uh, indeed happen, but so that that would be a sort of a very standard way of doing such as matrices in this theory, but yes indeed indeed it is just because there is a there is a time dependent uh, from 0 particle to a 2 particles. <coughs> if you write this, okay, there will be a dagger a dagger terms. Okay, good. <coughs> um, right, so that 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 is that is the, 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 the so there is no mystery here really, but let us try to understand this in terms of this uh, uh, past and future vacua. And um, here we go. So, in the in the past, so remember eta is our time, okay, that is conformal time, that is some time. So, we are looking for a mode expansion of this kind. This is homogeneous. Have and n is complex conjugate, where this a k eta, these are modes which simply go to positive frequency modes in the past. Okay. 
and if you look at this uh, if you look at this uh, uh, if you look at that action then there will be a schrodinger like equation of motion for this modes phi okay and you can see that something that is in which now can you identify that this is the same as the klein gordon equation that's, that's quite clear because this is a homogeneous space so the derivative square just becomes k square and uh, this this uh, time dependent becomes like a potential schrodinger potential for this and you can uh, from the fact itself you can see and the potential looks like what i have shown already earlier So something, so let's say this is eta. Something that is that starts out as e to the power minus i omega eta. Okay, in the future have a component. Which will be e to the power minus i omega eta, but it will also have a component which is a reflection sorry plus so therefore this positive frequency mode in the past will not remain a positive frequency mode in the future it will be a mixture of positive frequency and negative frequency modes uh, in the future okay so similarly you could consider another set of modes which is a pure sorry i should say that this omegas because of the mass term so the mass because the value of alpha square past and in the future are constants where the, but they are different constants so it will be this way that is also well known from one dimensional potential theory so i could consider another uh, set of modes which are positive frequency in the future okay so these modes do not go over so the purely positive frequency modes so the modes ak eta do not go over to the modes B K eta. Is that clear to everybody? Because, yeah. All right. Okay. Good. So let me say that. Okay. What I want is a Minkowski-like mode expansion in the past. Okay. For that, I need time-dependent. I need some solutions. Which have, uh, and I, I want to let's say focus on only the positive frequency types, okay? Positive frequency in the past. So I'm looking for solutions okay, of this equation, which are purely positive frequency in the past, okay? So that I can write down the past Minkowski, Minkowski vacuum in terms of those, okay? Then I evolve them in time. I ask the question. A purely positive frequency solution in the past, does it go over to a purely positive frequency uh, solution in the future? The answer is no. Okay. In fact, you can basically uh, write down the solution of this equation based on hypergeometric um, uh, formula for this uh, AK etas, which are purely positive frequency in the past. You can show that they have both, uh, you know, this kind of thing positive frequency as well as neg negative frequency in the uh, in the past so we'll see that it's because of the existence of this reflection okay that mode mixings happen and the vacua are actually different okay so that that's uh, what let me also say uh, make this remark uh, right now itself that um, 
if you did this, however, this time very, very slowly in the adiabatic limit, okay, then this reflection coefficient actually goes to 0. Okay. So, that is this adiabatic invariance of the vacuum. So, the past vacuum actually goes over to the future vacuum okay, in the adiabatic limit okay, and you will see that the particle creation actually disappears. Okay. So, in the adiabatic limit there is no particle creation, but on the other hand there is a quantum quench limit which is the other uh, uh, interesting uh, limit in which there is and in between there is a whole variety of uh, uh, what are called the ramp speeds okay, in which you have particle creation. This goes under the name of the kibble zurek uh, mechanism and it is very well studied in uh, other contexts. Okay. So, so I just want to. So, <coughs> so these guys okay, are something which in the future are not purely uh, positive frequency. Now, there are other solutions of course, in which you say that the boundary condition is like this. Okay. So, what are those solutions which have boundary condition like this at infinity? And those are let us say these are some other set of hypergeometric solutions. Okay. These are not these. Why not? Because as I said okay, that if this fellow went over to this one indeed, then it would have been purely positive frequency here and purely positive frequency here and no reflection. This reflection means that these AK modes and the BK modes are different and in fact they are. So, the AK modes must involve. So, let me say right now this notion of Bovolib of transformation. So, the AK modes will involve some linear combination of the BKs, but also their complex conjugates which will have the e to the power plus i omega. So, this is the generic story. This is the generic story that there will be this you can have two different sets of uh, modes in terms of which vacua are defined. So, I have not come to the vacua yet. Okay. So, the existence of this beta Bogolibov coefficients, this is called a Bogolibov transformation because it is precisely uh, you know in the in a very similar context that Bogolibov uh, uh, discovered this transformation in the context of BCS theory. BCS theory precisely has this a dagger a dagger okay, because as you know I mean there the you know the psi psi has a condensate etcetera. So, therefore, there is a psi dagger psi dagger. So, it is a very very uh, similar context that you have uh, this. So, it is uh, and these beta coefficients okay, are in related to the reflection coefficients here. Okay. So, that that is what I am not going to do the mathematics here, but I, I hope you understand that it is a potential problem and there is reflection and that says that the A and the B, A, B's have mode mixing between positive and negative frequency. Okay. So, let me write this now as a more general story of <coughs> what happens if you have two sets of uh, field modes and two different vacua defined in terms of them. So, I <coughs> okay. So, let me say let me say here itself that if you define you define your past uh, vacuum, okay, what I call zero in. So, once again go to this picture, okay is uh, asymptotically uh, in the t e going to minus infinity limit is Minkowski space and I will define an in vacuum by the modes, the oscillators which accompany modes which are purely positive frequency in the past. Okay. So, I will define 
zero in like this and I'll in zero out to be okay I have not defined this yet so let me say that in terms of these modes there is a second sorry excuse so what am i doing first there is a first set of mode expansions which is appropriate to the physics of the past because the mode functions that i have used here they go to purely positive physics in the past and those oscillators i call ak and ak dagger okay and uh, I have here another mode expansion, okay, which is appropriate to the physics of the future because the mode functions here go to purely positive frequency, uh, these BKs, they go to purely positive frequency uh, solutions in the future. And these A's and B's, they are related, the two sets of mode functions, they are related by a condition like this and I will define the future, the future no particle vacuum, this is the future no particle vacuum in terms of the B modes, okay, and that is uh, this one. And now I will use some general formula to show, so it is, it is quite clear, okay, because the modes are uh, not the same that the A and the B's, the, the oscillators will not, not be the same also and uh, the consequence of uh, that generally will be that uh, okay so let me let me write down some general formula here suppose you have two sets of mode expansions so some of this you should try to derive So here my labels were k, etc, etc. It could be much more general. So let me just say that phi has two sets of mode expansion. And the distinction between what is AI and what is AI bar is made by the choice of some time, okay. And this is by uh, uh, different uh, choice here. And um, this, okay, is a complete uh, set of solutions of by itself, this is a complete mode expansion of solutions of the uh, Klein-Gordon equation uh, in curved space and this also is. So in particular, if you have some, some curved space, whatever, then the completeness means that on any particular time slice, okay, these guys, the A and A bar, can, you can decompose an arbitrary function. You can decompose an arbitrary function of the variables on this slice, okay, in terms of the A and AI bar. Similarly, also in terms of I and BI bar on a particular time slice. Now I say that, well, I evolve this data, okay, from S onwards towards the future as well as the past, okay, and phi, therefore, will be expressed. Phi is an on-shell function. Phi satisfies the equation of motion. So first I say that the arbitrary data can be, uh, bar and therefore when I turn on the equation of motion then this data is evolved in the past in the future so therefore in all of time valid decomposition of phi and alternative valid decomposition of phi okay
any well so i'll i'll give examples of time slices so in this in this example the time slice can be anywhere anywhere okay so if you take a time slice here in the past okay it would look like the mode expansion would look like exactly like minkowski mode expansion if you are using the ak fellows and if you are doing it here then it would look like minkowski mode expansion in terms of this one but then what you can do is to say that you start with the minkowski mode expansion here and then turn on the equation of motion okay and it will go over to something which is not a minkowski minkowski mode expansion in some other time slice in the in the, in the future okay <coughs> so let me write down a few uh, few formula here and suppose i know that the bi's are given by so these are called bogoliubov coefficients if this is given as my basic then uh definition of bogoliubov coefficient then the following results follow the oscillators are related by just comparison so you write the uh, expansion of b in terms of a okay a and a bar here and similar expansion for b bar in terms of a bar and a here and compare okay if you compare these things you will find that so that's one result then an inverse of this relation so exists and the inverse of this also exists here i have assumed that both a and uh, the b set are orthonormalized in the klein gordon norm okay along any surface the norm is defined along any surface and you can show that the choice of the surface does not matter in defining the norm by using the klein gordon equation okay so a is a linear combination of b and b dagger and b is a linear combination of a and a dagger okay so now i ask question and the orthonormality of the modes they also satisfy they also imply some interesting relation which is alpha square minus beta square equal to 1 now so here is an exercise consider this is a reality show and press your button so for a given i this is not summed uh suppose i define my vacua the a vacua as this and the b vacua as 0 b as this relation <coughs> then i have already indicated that the 0 b and 0 a are not the same if this was the same as the vacua of the b modes okay then what would be the re result here if 0 a was the same as 0 b then what would this be zero very good okay now here your time starts now press the button <laughs> what's the result here
Okay, so you use this. So, so that is it does not get annihilated, you should use the a dagger part here. So that gives you a factor of i j bar. And you can write the similar expression for B dagger. So B dagger has an alpha, sorry, B dagger, I dagger minus beta A. And you must choose the A coefficient here, uh, the one that acts on this side. So that will be some another minus sign with an I J. and there will be a sum over j and this is what the answer is. So this is a rather celebrated answer, uh, summation over j, <coughs> okay. So there is a certain particle density, so this is the number operator of the B particles, okay. So the vacuum which is the no particle state of the A oscillators uh, of the A modes, okay, is not a no particle state of the B, uh, B modes, it is uh, uh, something which has a, a particle density which is this one. In this particular example, you can also compute the stress tensor and other interesting quantities and you can, uh, so I am not going to do this for this model, but I am going to do this for the black hole uh, model later. Okay, good. So, yeah. We are the, at the five minute point? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So wh what I'll do is to uh, maybe just introduce Rindler space today, um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I'll do. So, um, so is this is this everybody that you know there is a there are different choices of vacua that are possible. Okay. In particular, this was a time dependent uh, space time, necessarily time dependent space time. There is no choice of the time coordinate with which this time dependence will go away. There is a time dependence here, it will just stay and you are forced to have these uh, two different choices of the time uh, uh, of the vacua, uh, even if you stick to your favorite Minkowski uh, vacua, okay. So there is an essential time dependence particle creation here. And that essential particle creation as I said can be understood in terms of the standard quantum field theory Feynman diagrams, okay, of the thinking of this as a vertex for creation of a uh, this uh, particle, yeah. So you, s uh, you started with showing that uh, with the Poincare symmetry you have only you need one symmetry. Right. If, uh, so as both the space time at t goes to infinity and t goes to minus infinity you have Poincare. Uh, asymptotic, asymptotic Poincare symmetry. Uh, so uh, what was the meaning of unique then given the symmetry? Uh, oh, it's only here that you could choose some other, you know, in this part you could choose some any other kind of um, uh, modes A, okay, which uh, are corresponding to some boosted frame here. You can do some boost and stuff in this. This is one plus one dimension. Okay. And, um, uh, but that will not change this vector. Okay. But those symmetries do not go over here throughout the space time. So as a result, you know, this, these uh, results which I uh, said is that, you know, the AK and BKs are not unitarily related, okay, by some Poincare or some Poincare thing. There is no Poincare group which covers uh, all of this uh, space time. Okay, because there is there's mainly time dependence in the group. Even time transversions is part of it. Okay. Um, uh, all right, all right. So let me just, let me just begin with uh, uh, what, what, what is the story of the Ringler observer and maybe I'll just state the result to how I do the result. <coughs> So consider uniformly accelerated observers in Minkowski space. Okay, what does it mean? That means that some x mu of tau such that 
x coming out q, this object is equal to some alpha square, so alpha is some number. Okay, you can easily solve this. The solution is that it is given by <coughs> 1 over alpha. where this is x0 of t and again I am talking about two dimensional space time ok uh, ok so let, let me let me let me back out a little bit I am talking about Minkowski space I am talking about Minkowski space but non inertial observers ok so the coordinate system set up by those guys is called Rindler space time. Okay. That space time okay, is actually uh, Minkowski space time, but part of it. Okay. So, this plot, so the space time that I have is this the standard Minkowski space and the trajectory looks like this. Okay. There are other signs possibly here, but with plus signs, this is what it is. And <coughs> this is one accelerated observer, however you can consider a family of accelerated observers with various accelerations, <coughs> okay, different accelerations. Like that, and so if you do that, you get a family sorry, my SH is sint sine hyperbolic and CH is cos <coughs> and E. like that <coughs> and it is good to use light cone coordinates. So here a given value of this xi okay, that corresponds to a particular these are all xi equal to constant trajectory. Okay. And along that this eta varies this eta is again related to the proper time okay, but not exactly the proper time. Okay, and the acceleration along any one of these things of course depends on xi in this way as this acceleration alpha is given by A that is the value of the acceleration for the specific choice of the parameter xi okay. and the acceleration goes to 0 in the uh, limit when so clearly these things are straightening, straightening up more and more and they become like static observers at some point. Okay, and this set of observers, okay, even with infinite amount of acceleration, they just land up here. Okay. And nobody can move across. So this is called I will call this the right region and this I'll call left region, there's another set of accelerated observers kind like okay if you could if you wish you could also consider piece like hyperbolas like this those regions will be called f and e okay and tomorrow so so first point is that this family of uh, observers this this family of observers they can never talk to this family of observers as they are. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, their sh their shining flashlights. Okay, the photons that they send that can meet each other and so on and so forth. But by the observers by themselves, they cannot meet each other. They are confined. Okay, they have a horizon. Okay, they are confined here, 
and these guys, these L uh, observers are confined, uh, are confined here. Tomorrow, I'll solve the Klein Waddle equation in uh, using the coordinates of this right observers, and using the coordinates of the left observers, and set up a backward, okay, corresponding to that. Okay. Now we, we have become experts of uh, you know doing backward because uh, you, you just do field expansions, write down the modes and demand that uh, the modes are uh, uh, they, those annihilation operators define your uh, your back. Okay, so there will be a regular backward and the Mikowski backward of course we have already defined and we'll see that. So let me write down the result that Subrat already has written down and the one that I'll derive tomorrow. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to derive that today, but I promise to derive that tomorrow. Is that the Minkowski vacuum, the vacuum that is the Poincare invariant vacuum and so on, that is related to, so let me say just one notation I, I, I should use. So there are the um, right uh, moving uh, modes. There are the right moving modes in the Rindler and left moving modes. These are massless scalars, 45 minute, uh, 45 degree trajectories like that. And you have right moving guys in the left region and left moving guys in the um, left re region. So the Minkowski space thing is There is a there is factor here, important factor that we'll uh, discuss tomorrow. Um, uh, on the Rindler vacuum, and this will explicitly evaluate that this is the same as. This uh, entangled, particular entangled state in terms of the thermal field uh, uh, double, where this is the Hilbert space of the L uh, oscillators and this is the Hilbert space of the R oscillators. Okay, I have said many things now without derivation. Tomorrow I will derive both these formulas that the, uh, so first of all, it shows that the Minkowski space is not clearly the same as the Rindler uh, vacuum and it has all these. Uh, you know, if you bring these things down, clearly it has creation operators uh, up to infinite power, okay, of these things and they come paired, okay. So, the pairing is this way that the, there are these modes, okay, the BR and BL, they are paired and these modes which are also paired, okay, these are sometimes called Hawking pairs okay, in the context of the black. Okay, so. Uh, with that, I'm sorry I went over by some time. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I want to make sure the question that uh, I asked you a little earlier. So, uh, suppose uh, first thing is that uh, so in the zero for my vacuum, uh, uh, yes. this is Poincare invariant. So, I can construct my Poincare generator in terms of this is Poincare invariant in the in, 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 the in the t equals to minus infinity. infinity. Yes, asymptotic, asymptotically asymptotic. concurrent. Yeah. Yes. So here I can construct all my generators in terms of say A of A is, yes. and I can show, as you said, I can show that those are invariant. Yes. I mean, uh, though uh, this is invariant. Correct. Now suppose uh, I go to T goes to, so uh, now I want to see the invariance of 0, comma B, yes. and uh, with the same operators, right? I can write the same operators in, uh, in terms of Bs as well, right? Oh, but this, this will, if you if you construct the Poincaré generators, yeah. okay, um, uh, in the asymptotic past, yeah. that will have uh, bilinear like A dagger A kind of objects. Okay. Okay. And the reason why, it, um, so I see what. 
So those total generators which you have constructed out of the A's and the zero in is invariant under those and you look by that. That will involve this kind of bilinearities. Okay? And that is why is zero. Okay. Now because of the Bogolub of uh, transformation, what happens is that the A dagger A fellows they involve B dagger B as well as they have B B dagger. Okay. And in fact, B dagger, B dagger, etc. <coughs> same guys. You take this, these generators, same fellows, they will have B daggers to the right. Therefore, these will not. So, <coughs> such, this will not be zero. There is another set of, so this is, if you wish, this is called J in. It would look like this. There is another set of, um, uh, another set of, um, just like Hamiltonian itself, you do the same thing with Hamiltonian. So Hamiltonian will be some kind of A dagger A, but that A dagger A, which anything exists, will not end with the other one because it will be called uh, B B dagger A. B dagger B dagger. So, um, yeah, so the, the J out, will involve basically B dagger B. And that's okay. But then the J out will involve A A dagger. So that will not kill this. So there is there is no there is no construction of the angular momentum generators or the momentum generators which are purely normal order okay, all through space. Let's uh, let's break now. Let's thank Gautam again.